Hey everybody, welcome back. This is an updated video that I did to something a little while back where you could build a Nexus 6P ROM on your computer using SuperR's Kitchen. I decided to update the video and we're now going to build one for the Pixel 2 XL. Now this program has undergone a lot of changes. Most of them are good. Some of them you may not notice, a lot of it was behind the scenes. But this is definitely much more user friendly even now from compared to what it was just months ago. And I highly recommend checking out SuperR's uh, work here. We are now up to a $15 minimum donation in order to have access to the donate version. And there is a bunch of stuff that you can do with the donate version, um, especially that you can't do with the free. And if you're really serious about developing ROMs, this is the way to go about it. So what we're going to do today is we are going to take the March security update for the Pixel 2 XL, codenamed Payman, and we're going to take that and run it through this, and we're going to get a very generic, flashable custom ROM that you can flash onto your phone as long as you have an unlocked bootloader. So sorry Verizon guys, you're out of luck. So what we're going to do, we're going to come down here and, you know, I could have hidden everything I didn't, I don't know why. So we're going to go up here to SuperR's Kitchen, and this file right here is our factory factory image <clears throat> and this contains all of the things that were well we won't need every single one of these but this is basically what we need so we're going to copy this because what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and just make this clean i'm going to hide everything so inside super Rose kitchen we're going to start it up and what's the project name? How about P2XL Custom Run? You'll notice over here on the right that it created a folder. And this is where all of your parts are going to go, is right in here. So before you do anything, because the very next thing to do is extract your firmware, you need to copy what we had there into this folder. So paste. And there we are. Now we're going to go and extract everything. So number four. Extract the current project, yes. So what we're doing is we're currently taking that file right here and we're pulling out like system image, vendor image, boot image, all that kind of stuff, putting it in here and then extracting the contents of system and vendor into folders with the respective names, as you can see here. And this is what we're going to need in order to make specific changes to uh, the system, root, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so now it says, would you like to extract vendor image? You don't have to, but in, in most cases I found recently, extracting the vendor image is a good idea. So we're going to hit yes. Converting to sparse, copying files. Notice it goes into a vendor folder as well. And then once this is done, we can go ahead and start entering in some of the options that we're going to do, including what kind of uh, root method we like to use, whether it's Ma Magisk or SuperSU, SuperSU, uh, SuperSU, uh, I don't know, however you want to say it, Super Super User. Okay, so now it's asking me, would you like to include the files from vendor image in your ROM? You can either flash the vendor image separately, or you can include the files as if it were one ROM and flash them as extracted files. So I like to include them, it does work. And they match this particular ROM, so they match the system. You might as well flash them all at once. So hit yes. What is the name of the zip? I was going to come up with something rather, uh, completely inappropriate, but for this video, we're going to keep it correct. So P2XL uh, custom, whoops, custom ROM March update. What is your signature? There we go. So in this case, I used to use set metadata and starting with NuGet more or less and definitely with Oreo, uh, one, two, and three are not really fantastic options. So I'm gonna stick with number four, raw image. Okay, so we have all of our stuff here. We could build this as is and create a flashable zip, but we'd like to customize it a little bit. So we're gonna look in uh, miscellaneous tools, which is under number six. 
And here you can do things like change the heap size for your computer, uh, zip align the APK files. I don't really see any reason to do this stuff, at least the way that I make my ROMs. So we're going to go back out to the main menu. We're not going to mess with any of that. We're going to go into number nine really quick. I'm going to skip ahead and I'll show you why. So nine, I have installed the Magisk plugin, which allows the system to download the latest Magisk installer and add it to your image. So since it's already here, we're going to use number one to run a plugin, and we're going to go to number two to install Magisk. It's been added to your ROM. You'll notice the folder came up over here, and this is the Magisk installer. So if ever you want to update this manually, just download whatever the current Magisk installer is, drop it right here, give it the same name, and you're good to go. It's that easy. So coming back over here, yes, uh, hit enter, sorry. Go back to the main menu because we're done here. Now we're going to go to number seven. Now you notice the pack boot image is not available. That's because the changes are done elsewhere. So here are a couple things. And let me point out that at the moment, init B support is non-existent. Uh, and if it is, it's not fully functional, it's buggy, uh, and it will cause your build to fail at the end. Uh, no specific reason for uh, SuperR to fix that. In fact, I think he's going to remove it. So we're going to leave that one alone as before we actually used to do that. But SU.D is actually the replacement. So we're going to leave that alone. Insecure and secure boot image, we're going to leave that as secure. I know that doesn't sound right, but Magisk Installer will take care of that when it's installed uh, when you flash the ROM. So leave that secure. DM Verity is already disabled. And of course, we're going to add and remove Force Encrypt. So in this case, we're going to disable Force Encrypt. But number five. There we go. And patch SE policy for Oreo DODX. I don't plan on DODXing. Uh, that's more for being able to quickly and easily edit APKs. I'm not going to be doing that, at least not yet. So if you plan on doing that for Oreo, select this option, go back. You can do a DODX on the system and everything should be fine. Let's go back out to the main menu now. And now we're going to go to number eight, ROM tools menu. This is where I was talking about DODXing the ROM. Uh, we're not going to do that, obviously. You can change the permission type, which is currently raw image, but we're not going to mess with that. Number three, root menu. So you can see we've already rooted with Magisk. We're going to install BusyBox, so select number two. And it will, add, it will download it if you don't already have it. So I already have it here. We're going to hit yes. And su.d support. This one does work. So hit number three. Would you like to add it? Yes. And you're good here. So we'll back up one, number four. Now the asserts menu, uh, if I didn't explain this before, simply allows you to add in an extra entry in the updater script or update binary that tells the system whether or not that particular zip file is flashable on a different device. So currently we'll look in here. Number four, I currently have Tamen as my main because this is a Pixel 2 XL. I could add in, say, Angler or Marlin or something like that, and it would flash on those devices as well. Now, it probably wouldn't work because there's a lot of stuff specific to the Pixel 2 XL that's in here, but that is an option if you want to make something that flashes that way. So what we're not going to do is, is mess with any of this. We're going to back out. I went too far. Okay, so back where we were, extra directory menu simply allows you a place to put APKs where when the system is installed, you can easily uninstall them as if they were downloaded applications rather than having to go through the system menu and uninstall them that way. If you want to mess with that, you can. Uh, some things will work that way, some things will not. You can move some system APKs from there into the extra directory. Some will go, some will not. So it's up to you if you want to mess with that. But the bloat menu simply allows you to run a script that will blanket apply to all of your image here and remove anything that you have specified. Folders, files, add things in, you name it. That's what it'll do. It's kind of like a, a full-on customized script and you run that at whatever point you're ready to build. And then obviously we need the build menu. So number seven, and what we're going to do is we are not going to build an EXT4. We're not going to sign anything. Um, 
you can change the display ID if you really want to. I'm not going to bother with this. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to build the full ROM zip. Now this is going to take a while. Number one, preparing update or script. Do you want to convert to an update binary? No, I do not. Uh, you can if you'd like, but I prefer to be able to edit mine later. So no. Go with number four, system image, because we chose su.d and that one does work. So vendor image, number four. And then it's going to go through and it's going to do a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to shut my trap here for a minute and I will come back when it's ready. Okay, so now we have a completed zip file. Would I like to sign the zip file? We're going to say no because we really don't need to. Hit enter. And that's it. So over here on the right, you'll notice Pixel 2XL Custom ROM March Update. It's now 1.2 gigabyte. We can open this up, and this is what will be installed. You can drop in Magisk right here if you want to make an update. Same with BusyBox if you find an updated version or a different version you'd like. And under this, update or script, open outside. I'm going to use Notepad. And this is where you can change the entries. Uh, maybe you want to change your name. You want to add in, say, version 1, version 2 whatever uh, you can there's a bunch of stuff in, in here you can work with uh, if you know what you're doing so that's really it for this it's pretty easy so that's it guys that's how you make a custom ROM you would you would take this load it up onto your phone go into TWRP recovery and flash it directly reboot and you should be good to go so thanks for watching guys hope to see another video like share and subscribe and I will see you again. Thanks for watching.